All right, let's go ahead and get started. I want to welcome you to Unit 15. This is Acid, Base, Equilibrium, and Buffers. I want to make a special acknowledgement for these notes, and in fact, for this entire playlist, I want to thank uh, Denise DiMartino from Austin Westlake High School, an outstanding uh, educator there, and uh, I want to thank her for making these notes available, so I've just uh, redone them, really kind of repacked them. Uh, but the point is that uh, uh, I just want to make that acknowledgement before we start. Uh, thank you, Mr. Diamartino. All right, here we go. Let's begin re by reviewing Arrhenius and Bronsted Lowry definitions of acids and bases. So I want to start with the Arrhenius definition of an acid and base. So there's basically two definitions that we need to know about, and you do have to keep the name straight. The Arrhenius definition and the Bronsted Lowry definition. So let's start with Arrhenius. When we say an Arrhenius acid, what we mean is that anything that increases the hydrogen ion concentration in a solution. Okay, so anything that you put into water, and water is kind of the uh, the stage, the staging area for all acid-base chemistry. So anything that increases the hydrogen ion concentration, an Arrhenius acid. So for example, if I place hydrochloric acid into water, it's going to dissociate into H plus and Cl minus. The fact that H plus its amount is increased by virtue of the fact that you put the hydrochloric acid into the water means that hydrochloric acid is going to be defined as, as an Arrhenius acid. Likewise, if you have something that increases the hydroxide or the OH minus concentration, that's going to be classified as, as an Arrhenius base. So sodium hydroxide, for example, will dissociate into Na plus and OH minus, and, though, and that is going to classify it as an Arrhenius base. Okay. So make sure you keep these straight. Arrhenius acid, Arrhenius base, hydrogen ion concentration increases, for the acid, hydroxide ion concentrations increase for the base, right? So I'm going to talk much more in detail about the Bronsted-Lowry definitions uh, or definition of an acid and base uh, in a while. But for right now, I just want to say that we classify a Bronsted-Lowry acid as a proton donor and a Bronsted-Lowry base as a proton acceptor. I want to talk a, take, a, take a look at this uh, ionization of water. As it turns out, in a container of water, uh, wa the, it's not all H2O. What's going to happen is that H2O is going to ionize slightly. In other words, the H2O uh, is not all, the water is not all H2O, it's H2O, and I'll write, a, that means that there's some H2O in there, but there's also H plus, and there's also OH minus ions in that solution, okay? Now, I do want you to know that H3O plus and H plus is the same thing. The moment that H, and I've been over this in an earlier uh, screencast, but the point is that uh, the moment that the H plus hits the water, it's going to become H3O plus or hydronium ion. Okay, so we can consider H3O plus or, again, this is called a hydronium ion. Let me write that. It's called hydronium. Just like that, a hydronium ion, just like that, and a hydrogen ion is the same thing. So let's take a look at how this, how one of these waters, and 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 by the way, water is kind of unique in that it can act as both an acid and a base, a Bronsted-Lowry and a Bronsted base. So let's see how. Well, remember that a Bronsted-Lowry acid is a proton donor. So one of these two molecules gave up a proton. Let's say it was this one, right? Let's say it's the second one. Because over here on the right-hand side, we're going to see it as OH-. minus. So proton donors are Bronsted-Lowry acids. So I'll put an A right there for acid. Now the first one accepted a proton. It was H2O. It's H3O plus now. So we'll call that a Bronsted-Lowry base. So I'll put a little B right there for base. Okay. All right. So that is it. So remember that water is kind of, again, the staging area for acid-base chemistry and water auto ionizes. It's called auto ionization. Doesn't happen very much, but it does happen. Now, if I were to ask you to write the equilibrium expression for this equilibrium, H2O liquid becoming H plus plus OH minus, how would you do that? Well, remember, it's products over reactants, concentrations of products over reactants. So we have H plus and OH minus, or times OH minus on top, coming from these two ions here. 
But we water is a liquid, so we're not going to include that in the equilibrium expression. So that's it. K, K is equal to K, uh, H plus times OH minus. Because it's water and water is special, they put a little W. So we just say it's special. It's K sub W. And that has a value. And that number is 1 times 10 to the negative 14. So the equilibrium constant for the autoionization of water is 1 times 10 to the negative 14. All right, so we begin to see the, the relationship between the autoionization of water and the pH scale. What's the highest pH we can have? 14, right. So the pH then, remember, is we said before, was equal to minus the logarithm of the hydrogen ion concentration. Well, for neutral water, what's the hydrogen ion concentration? For neutral water, what's the hydrogen ion concentration? Well, remember that we add the, 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 the logarithms. We add the powers. That's the rule for multiplication. So that would mean that the, at, for neutral water, that the hydrogen ion concentration would be 1 times 10 to the negative 7, right? 1 times 10 to the negative 7. It would also be that for hydroxide, but I'm only concerned about the hydrogen ion concentration. Well, that should give you another clue of where the pH scale came from. It came from this idea that water auto ionizes, and the Kw is 1 times 10 to the minus 14, so that's the maximum pH you can have. Neutral is when hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions are the same. The hydrogen ion concentration is 1 times 10 to the minus 7, so the pH for that's neutral is 7. Okay, the pH is 7. It was actually a, a, a Danish scientist who invented the pH scale. His name was Soren Sorensen. And he did it actually because he tired of writing this, you know, 1 times 10 to the minus 14 or 1 times 10 to the minus 7. He was, he was studying uh, acidity and basicity and said there must be an easier way. So what he did was he invented the pH scale. And so here's what, it, what the pH scale does. It says pH is equal to minus the log. That's how he defined pH. He said minus the log, or kind of you can think of the P as being minus the log of the hydrogen ion concentration. So if you want to know the hydrogen ion concentration, you can determine if you know the pH and vice versa. The pOH is equal to minus the log of the hydroxide ion concentration. And then pH plus pOH is equal to 14. So the pH scale came from this autoionization of water idea. Okay? All right. So we want to do a couple of exercises now. Uh, that involve dissociation. But before we do that, I want to go over again with you the, the idea of strong acids versus weak acids and strong bases and weak bases. What do we mean when we say a strong acid or a strong base? We mean that it, there's complete dissociation. So we indicate that simply with an arrow in the right direction, in the left to right. Okay. So strong means complete dissociation. Weak means not compl completely dissociated. So we do a double arrow, or we can do an arrow like this with two, two, two uh, points on each of the ends. Either way, it's just fine. But the point is that strong means complete dissociation. Weak means not complete dissociation. And we call that, by the way, equilibrium, right? And we've done a whole unit now on equilibrium. All right, now, there we go. So now what we want to do is we want to def uh, take a look at the strong acids uh, and the weak acids. So strong acids are, there's six, and you've got to memorize them. And here they are. So if you don't know them, if you haven't known them before, you, I need you to know them now. They are hydrochloric acid, hydrobromic acid, hydroiodic acid, nitric acid, sulfuric acid, and perchloric acid. Those are them. Let me go through them, those again. Hydrochloric, hydrobromic, hydroiodic nitric, sulfuric, and perchloric acid, those are the strong acids. Make sure you know those, okay? Now, weak acids. Here's a rule for knowing the weak acids. Actually, there's two rules. Number one rule is if it's not a strong acid, but you know it's an acid, it's a weak acid, okay? 
If it's not strong, it's weak. And you know the strong one, so everything else got to be weak, right? Another way to, 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 another rule is any carbon containing acid is weak. For example, if I have CH3COOH, that's acetic acid, that's a weak acid, okay? Strong bases, these include all the group one hydroxides. Everything in group one with an OH is going to be a strong base. In addition to that, the last two elements in the second group, strontium and barium, are also going to be strong bases. So strontium hydroxide and barium hydroxide, strong bases. Weak bases, the prototype that I want you to remember is NH3. Ammonia is a weak base, okay? Ammonia is a weak base. So with that in mind, let's take a look at what the instructions say. It says for aqueous solutions, write dissociation reactions and indicate if it's an arrhenius acid or a base. All right, here we go. <clears throat> Hydrofluoric acid, is it a weak or strong acid? Well, it's weak, okay? It's a weak acid, and therefore we put a double arrow there. We're just going to break up into H plus ions and F minus ions. Try to remember to put the aqueous there, and uh, if not, it's not a huge deal, but uh, do try to remember, okay? So that's how we're going to dissociate this. So we know it's an acid, so we'll just write acid right there. So it's a weak acid. That's how it will dissociate. So one hydrogen, and in this case, there is only one hydrogen is going to come off. Next one, we have HC6H5O, right? When you see an H like that, that's kind of by itself, that's the hydrogen. Even though there might be more hydrogens, that's the hydrogen that we call acidic. That's the one that's going to go away. So just take it off, and we have H+. plus. Remember the double arrow because it's a weak acid. H plus aqueous plus what's left is C6H5O minus We'll put aqueous, and again, it is an acid, right? Next, barium hydroxide. We've already said that the last two, uh, the, the first column and the last two in the second column are going to be strong bases. So barium hydroxide, definitely a strong base, right? It's a strong base. Now, we have Ba2 plus aqueous plus 2OH minus. Notice the OH minus. This is a bronsted lowry base or excuse me, uh, uh, an arrhenius base because it's releasing OH minus ions in the solution as opposed to A and B, where they, which are releasing uh, H plus ions. So this is a base. Next, lithium hydroxide. Is this a strong acid or a strong base or a weak base? It's a strong base. So we have Li, aqueous plus OH. It's just that simple. So it's an arrhenius base because of the fact that we've got that OH minus right there. All right, now... Here's a tricky one. We've already talked about it a little bit. H2O could be either an acid or a base. It produces both H plus and OH minus. It's both. It is both because of the fact that uh, it's producing both of these, right? It's also a proton donor and a proton acceptor. We've talked about that before. That's the Bronsted-Lowry definition. And there's a name for this. It's called amphoteric. Amphoteric is means means that it can act as both an acid or a base. And finally, F, we have H2CO3. This is aqueous. This is a weak acid. So we do the double uh, double arrow. By the way, on E, remember that water is not a strong acid or strong base. So it's weak, so we put the double arrow on E as well. So at any rate, on back to F, we get H plus plus HCO3 minus, right? And so... This is kind of a, 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 a different one because of the fact that both of these hydrogens are acidic. But, so both of those hydrogens are going to come off. There's that H, H, H2CO3. But they're going to come off stepwise fashion. So first, what's going to happen is you're going to have the, uh, the first hydrogen come off, and you're going to have H++. What's left is going to be HCO3 minus, right? That's going to have, by the way, some K value. But then on the second one, you're going to remove another one, HCO3 minus, in equilibrium with, you're going to get H plus plus CO3 2 minus. This is going to have a smaller K value because it's going to be harder to remove that second one than it was the first one, okay? Folks, I think this is a good place to end, and so um, we'll pick it up on the next one. Thanks. Bye-bye.